Hello everyone, and welcome to the finale of Let's Play Pandemonium 2. Wow, it's it feels like it's been so long, but maybe it's just because the bitter end was so huge. But we're through it, and we're on to the final boss. Sorsha just went down the hole, and we gotta follow after her. Right on her heels. We still don't know why the level is called Rub the Buddha, though. So let's figure that out. Alright, let's go, let's go. No time to waste! Where is she? There she is. Oh no, what are you doing? Um... That happened? Okay... Um, I guess we gotta go too! Let's go! And with that we get... Whoa, Jesus! So, welcome to the final boss! Queen Zorsha as... The Buddha! Like, honestly, I have no idea what to think about this. Like, let's just get a quick look of, over at her. Like, this is huge and detailed. Look at this. She's got all this knot patterns. And let's look at her wonderful bum. Look at that bum. An amazing bum. Now, in order to take her down, we have to shoot at her with our wonderful power, superpower, magical powers that we have. Take her down. Uh oh, we made her mad. Now she's gonna shoot. Now she's gonna shoot us. So the whole idea is to take down all of the gems that are all over her body. I believe there's like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, I believe is the number of gems that are around. But I think there's a total of eight. The eight is what shows up when you destroy this one. Now, while I'm doing this, I might as well go over what I was going to talk about in the next video when the final boss became apparent. Um, just like the for, just like the wishing engine boss in the previous game, and I'm getting wrecked by this giant crystal. That's why I'm trying to take it down. And there's the next crystal because we have to deal with this crystal before we can leave. Uh, but anyway, the Wishing Engine was more of a twist boss than anything. Now, the entire the entire Pandemonium 2, the entire game was leading up to the point where we were going to fight Zorsha. However, they pulled a complete twist on us. Because Zorsha turned into this. We're not even through it. Now, you can hit this thing, but it's absolutely completely pointless. You can't take it down. And really, we have no point going over to the top. To the front anymore because the rest of the crystals are on her back. This top crystal is probably the hardest one to take down because of the these things on her back which spew stuff at us. There we go. <clears throat> which brings me to another point about the um, first and second games. And now we have to deal with the ones right above her butt. Uh, an actual enemy was in this game. Zorsha was kind of an adversary, an enemy, and now we get to see one of the most disturbing... Zorsha, why would you do this? Why would you do this? There is no reason for you to do this! Welcome to the second phase, where we take her head on. Yep, that, that, that was, yep. Yeah, uh, head on, okay. Uh, just, just, why would you do this? You have ever, <laughs> power, like, what power does this serve? You just detached your entire spine, and apparently your six ribs, and your head from the rest of your body. I don't think you've thought this through. So the entire rest of the fight is dodging her eye lasers, eye bolt, eye, mind bullets, eye bolts and shooting the crystal in her mouth when it becomes, um, open. 
Now anyway, back to what I was saying about Pandemonium uh, 1 and 2, and the fact that there is an actual adversary, and that Queen Dorsha is an actual rival, adversary, enemy, in this game. Uh, Pandemonium 1 really didn't have an actual enemy. It, like, in terms of directness. Yes, you could argue that, um, Young Go, the per the, the thing that Nikki and Farkas summoned themselves is the enemy, but you never face Young Go directly. You get rid of him by indirectly going to the Wishing Engine, because that's apparently all you're able to do. So there's kind of a difference there. And I kind of like that there's an enemy in Pandemonium 2 compared to Yungo. Because, what is it? Like, you just go to the Wishing Engine and then wish him away, and that's it. So, not a lot of conflict with Yungo. You completely forget about Yungo throughout the entire game, but here, you're reminded that Zorsha is right ahead of you, and that you have to get rid of her. Now I'm going to talk about this boss some more. This boss is just disturbing. When she's just kind of sitting there, she looks so blank, but yet so content. She's just like, You bomb a giant floating head! Yay! This is exactly what I wanted! Out of the comet! Like, why would you do this? Ow. And yeah, getting hit by the head really takes a chunk of health out of you. Come on. Like, oh, it's just creepy. Creepy every single time I fight it, it's always creepy. Her motives are just really out there. Overall, this boss really isn't that difficult. It's just down to your own ineptitude that's probably going to make it hard. As long as you keep moving in some direction or another, you're going to be fine. Absolutely fine. If you stay in one... You can't even stay in one spot, really, because... You fall if you're not pressing any buttons. Come on! Nope. You can only get like two hits per op per time that she opens her mouth, too. Annoying! Uh-oh. I'm down to one health now. This is not good. Uh. Ah! Uh. Yeah, there we go! Flames come out of her nose. And inexplicably, we're on her spine. Weird. So weird. Oh, she has a lumpy head. Her head has lumps. There we go. Guess I have a tongue. And inexplicably, this is one of the, I think this is the only boss that actually gives you treasure inexplicably at the end. There's absolutely no reason for the treasure. And all the lives. And everything. They're just like, here, have some crap. Here you go. And now we get to... The end. The end. Right through here. Here's her body. What awaits us? In the core! Wait, Vargas has to come to you! Vargas and Sid have to come to you! Let's go! Come on, Sid, go in! Alright, let's go! I hump it! Vargas, jump!
Wake up, Nikki. Nikki, wake up. Wake up. Wake up, Nikki. Wake up, Nikki. Wake up, Nikki. And so, Nikki and Fargus got what they wanted. But yeah, um, in terms of Fargus' character from the end of the first game and the second game, pretty much the same. He's self-absorbed. Because if you remember what the end of the first game was, that he turned all of the citizens of the village they saved into Fargus. So pretty much the same thing, except he turned the entire universe into faces that were his. And we get to see outtakes. How fun. But anyway. There we go. We have all... That was two. I'm surprised that Sid doesn't get his own ending. Considering his motivation. Like, I was trying to throw him in and nothing happened. I was very disappointed. But anyway, that is it. And we get to see the wonderful credits, which we can't play through. Which is another thing that I really don't... I, I really missed from the first game. I was I liked playing through the credits. It was great, but I guess with no shape-shifting abilities, with, oh, yeah. with the dragon, I guess not. And every single person has a nickname. Except for Caroline, I don't want a nickname. Yep. Alright. But we get to see wonderful little bloopers and outtakes from the game Nothing that don't really exist. I want a contract. Talking over, apparently, people talking. So one thing I wanted to, one last thing I wanted to discuss while these credits go. There we go. All right. Is um the mention of a quest question that could be on people's minds probably couldn't is a pandemonium 3. Should it or should not should it not happen? Well, I could have addressed this point a long time ago, but I'm. It, it seems poignant at this point after seeing the endings. And really, how could there be a Pandemonium 3? The only way I f see it is... There were no bees. Stop lying. The only way I see it is if... They redid it entirely, because after this, where do you go, is the question. You're- they're, they're, Nikki and Fargus are masters of the flippin' universe. <laughs> Nikki turned herself into the comet of infinite possibilities, apparently, and Fargus just made everything into him. Where do you go from this? They have nothing more to do. They're fulfilled in some sort of way. The only way I can see a third one coming around is that they completely, like, Rehash all the characters, made new characters. Stop poking that egg. They, if if they just got rid rid of Nikki and Farkas entirely and put in new characters. But then again, platforming hasn't been as important in terms of today's games, have they? Except for maybe Rayman, Rayman Origins, and Rayman Legends. The point I'm really trying to get at is, I don't think we'll ever see a third game of this. And I'm reminded of seeing, um, actually reading a review of the iPhone version of the first game, which was released a couple of years ago. Yeah, there we go. Ferguson said, not Greg Proops anymore, it's Martin Gnappler and Deborah ben Eliezer. Completely changed the voices of Nikki and Fargus. I miss Greg Proops. And there's a mining goon. Who looks pretty awesome. I have to say in terms of like the modeling. I don't know. Very muscular. But yeah, the review pretty much ended on the note that 
The Pandemonium series was a series of games that belong in the 90s and should have stayed in the I'm 90s, and big I agree with that. They belong in the era of the platformers of the 90s, and I don't think they have any place here. Today, this year's the years of the 2010s. Why are you going fishing for a walking fish, Nikki? Surprised how much speed she's getting in by reeling in on a fish that's going really slow. Oh well. Hey, Kristen Groly does, Groney doesn't have a nickname. Hey. Everybody has a nickname. Except for the Fords. I also noticed that in the credits. But yeah, Pandemonium 3. If it comes out, I'll play the hell out of it. But if it doesn't, then I'm not disappointed. I'm completely indifferent about a third game. Huh. And there we go, we get a nice little portrait at the end of Pandemonium 2. Which is kind of weird. Well, you got Sid looking the same, and then stylized, and then Farkas just has his thing. And then this bubble, Nori. I don't know what the bubble means. Why does it say Nori at the end? I think that's my like, final question about this game. But that is it for Let's Play Pandemonium 2. There's one more thing I'm going to cover in a bonus video. It's going to be very short compared to the last game. But that is it for the game. I, I thank you all, every person who watched this, because I ripped this series apart. Ugh. Yeah, just, just play the demo. I ripped this game apart, I realize this. Wow, the demo's freaking out. Thanks everyone for watching. I had a great time doing this. I hope all of you enjoyed seeing these games played out to the fullest. I was able to play them out too. It was great to learn a lot more about these games than I did when I was younger. And... Really, I it made me think a lot more. I don't really know what that means. I'm really just kind of going... This game broke me. This game really broke me. Huh. But I hope all of you enjoyed what we're going to see here. What we saw here. Huh. Thanks for watching, everyone. And hopefully, I will start up my next LP, well, hopefully, fingers crossed, by the end of the year. Stay tuned for that as we as I try to play try to play a game a little bit differently than what you see here. So until until then, take care everyone. <laughs>